My beloved brothers, my sisters, everything is created for us. Does it mean we must waste it? Indeed, those who are wasteful are the brethren of the devil. And the devil is very ungrateful to Allah. Ingratitude shown to Allah. That is the devil. Kafur. Kufr means disbelief. But it also means ingratitude, ungratefulness. So remember... Allah says, when you waste things, anything, you become a person who doesn't care for the rest of mankind. And that is a problem. When you care for mankind, you are a true believer. You understand Allah made me for me to have a relationship with him. I need to respect the rest of the things he made. They are special to him. If they weren't, he wouldn't have made them. Imagine your company has a logo, right? And a man who loves you a lot, when he sees that logo, what happens? He becomes excited. That's my friend's business. Subhanallah, that is my friend's business. Agreed? Yes. So every creature has a logo. We can't see the logo, but we know it means Allah created the creature. You really love Allah, you'll be happy. That's the creation of Allah. Allah says, from among the creatures of Allah, those who have sound intellect are the ones who sit and watch the rotation of the, the, the sun and the moon and the movement of the day and the night and the creation of the skies and the earth. They watch it and they look at it and they ponder over it and they say, Oh, our Lord, you have not created all of this in vain. Glory be unto you. Glory be unto you. You have a little bit of that which is compulsory, outstanding, but you have a lot of voluntary, which is there, which was yours. That's why they say you get closer and closer and closer to Allah. The more voluntary deeds you do when you make your five daily prayers a day, meaning every day you fulfill the five farad. Many people are doing that. What makes you different? What makes you different is the quality. Number one. Number two, over and above the farad. That's from you. You know, zakah is charity. You're supposed to give, in most cases, two and a half percent of your savings. In most cases, okay? I'm sure you know how to work it out. But the real test is how much are you going to give more than that? The two and a half was always Allah's. Whatever you gave more than that, that's you. That is now you. Are you going to prove to Allah, oh Allah, I'm going to give, for example, 5%, 10%. Or I'm just going to give here and there without even looking. Wherever there's a need, I'm going to try. Wherever there is, there is a need, I'm going to try. There are people like that. A lot of us, I'd like to think, wherever there is a need, if you can help, zakat or no zakat, you are going to give because you know Allah actually watches what you do. Are you only going to give from what is His? Or are you going to give now over and above that bonus what is yours? And the love of Rasul is manifest in our lives. The minute a person sees us, he would be able to tell this man loves the Prophet Muhammad because of just how you look. That's it. And then it, it carries on from there. How you look would be the first point of understanding of who you are because you've chosen to look in a way that had you been in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you would have fitted in completely. That's a good one. My brothers and sisters, if you were in the presence of the most beloved, the one who is going to be the first to enter Jannah, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the one who is going to have the intercession on that day of judgment, if you were in his company, would you be embarrassed because of the way? You've chosen to dress perhaps or to look. If the answer is yes, perhaps it's time to do something about that. 
if really you love the messenger, peace be upon him, you should want to fit in with whatever he has taught and how he, how he taught us to dress and to look. People find loopholes. You'll find every loophole in the world because there are people who are sitting there looking for loopholes. They're going to find them. They're going to create them out of nothing. But to be honest with you, if you're a genuine person, rather than looking for loopholes, do the right thing. Just follow the example. And inshallah, we take it from there. May Allah bless you all. And when you want alleviation from your suffering, you must read the seerah. You must go through pages of the seerah. The seerah meaning the life of the Prophet ﷺ, his biography. If you look through the pages and see the hardship he went through, you will definitely achieve comfort because you realize I didn't go through all this. Imagine for three years, they were surrounded at a place, subhanallah, Shi'ab Abi Talib in Mecca, just on the outskirts of Mecca, for three whole years. Then too, they suffered with food and drink. Without it, they had to make do with whatever they had. Subhanallah, they were sucking the roots of the trees in order to derive that little liquid or to extract that water. Have you ever done that? Not at all. The other day I was speaking to some of the brothers and sisters and I was saying, who's ready to try to be on dates and water for three whole months? Nobody. Not one from amongst us. Why? Because we'll say, well, you know, that's a little bit far-fetched and we, we don't need to do that. It's true. But the thought of it already makes you want to refuse and reject it. May Allah forgive us. Yet the best of creation went through all of that. Like I said earlier, he faced accusation, all sorts of things. They said things about him. They didn't listen. Not only that, they went to war with him. They wanted to harm him in person so many times. He continued to pray for these people and he continued to try with these people. And guess what? He succeeded. Today, how many Muslims are there across the globe? How many people are turning to Islam at a time like this when it is not easy to be Muslim? That's because the blessings of the Prophet ﷺ given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his path, his way, everything to do with his life is important. The way he breathed, the way he ate and spoke, the way everything, the way he relieved himself and there is a lot of detail in every aspect of his life because it's an act of worship, not only to learn it, but to put it into practice as best as you can. May Allah grant us goodness. We want to see success. Well, here it is. This is just an introduction to the topic. You need to make the effort. You need to undertake that I'm going to go back. I'm going to buy a book or get hold of a book that will teach me the detailed seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and I'm going to go through page by page, read it and check what hardship and what difficulty he went through and how he dealt with each item, with each one. Subhanallah, he made peace treaties at times. He had to send envoys or envoys to different parts of the world. Subhanallah, at a time when transport was not how it is today few hours a few hours ago i was somewhere else in the world in a different continent now i'm in a different continent and after a few hours i'm going to be in another continent but at that time they were on horseback they took a long time to go and deliver messages but we know about those messages today so my brothers and sisters thank allah that you are part of this ummah blessed ummah we are honored to be studying this seerah to be looking into the aspects of the seerah and we ask Allah Almighty to accept it from all of us. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.